thank you for joining us for this very special live event uh, as part of Art Station Fashion Week. My name is Stephanie and I work at Art Station and today we have a very special guest from the University for the Creative Arts who will be doing our live demo today. Hi V. Hello. Hi V, thank you so much for joining us today for this demo. Um, can you please tell us uh, a little bit about yourself and what you'll be doing, uh, what your demo will be about today? Most certainly. Uh, so my name is V. I reside in the UK. I'm a concept artist for film and games. Uh, I also lecture at UCA, uh, which is the leading university of fashion um, and textiles. So it's nice to meet you all. And I uh, look forward to get this demo going. Awesome. So your demo today will be using Substance Painters, correct? That is correct. So uh, we'll be using Substance Painter to create some unique print designs, uh, something organic, something fun to play around with uh, in Substance. Well, that's exciting. I'm really excited for it. Um, just for everybody uh, who's watching right now, um, we'll be taking questions at the end of the demo. So feel free to drop them in the chat and we'll take note and we'll answer them at the end. Um, so V, uh, I'll drop off and uh, yeah, the, the screen is yours, enjoy. Thank you. All right, hello everyone. Um, so I have a time slot of 30 minutes. I'm gonna do the best I can uh, to kind of show you the thought process of how I like to approach uh, print design or something a little bit more organic. Now on Substance, there's absolutely a plethora of tools you could use. Uh, you can go the procedural route. You can you can do hand painted stuff. Um, li literally, the sky is the limit. So, but today I'm going to just give you my two cents on how I like to approach things. Um, one of the main aspects of this style is not one design is ever going to be the same. So you can't technically recreate it uh, because everything is so uh, uh, unique. No way. So here, here's what uh, some of the designs I've done uh, as a preparation for this demo. And the designs were actually inspired by one of our UCA graduates uh, designs. So she's a recent graduate. Her name is Martina Mansare, and she actually has produced uh, an award winning collection um, on a website on a clothing website. Um, feel free to Google her, Martina Mansare, uh, but she's an absolutely awesome uh, student at UCA. And we have a, a selection of these almost marbled effect uh, tie-dye-esque technique that's allowed her to achieve some really cool patterns, really cool patternings. So I've decided to might as well, ex you know, gain some inspiration from, from that and interpret it because there's no fun in just replicating the design. It's always fun to like interpret it and, and take your own spin on it. So if I take you through quickly my interpretations of it, and just to, just to, as a as a note, you can download this jacket from the fabricant. This is a free open source jacket. Uh, so from the fabricant, they've uh, they basically have created a competition lately that allows you to download a jacket and just play around with it. So I thought, why not use it? Because it's it's there. And I think it's pretty awesome, uh, the shape in itself. So this was the, the pinky red design. So I find pretty cool. And arguably one of my favorite designs. It's like some odd coffee colored camo-esque. So uh, we'll probably get into exactly how we go about creating these designs. All right, so let's get into it. I'm going to have a few extra helping tools. So you'll see in the top corner here, you'll have your uh, keystroke, and I'll, I'll be going through uh, some annotation notes as well using the pen tool. So if you see me scribbling around the screen, this is what I'm using. Okay. All right, let's get into it. So really, we're not going to talk about so much the the black shiny materials. We're going to focus on the pattern itself. But I'll definitely, towards the end, just uh, tell you exactly how I went about doing that. But for now, I'm going to focus on the actual uh, designs. So let's get into it. Let me hide everything, like so. And the purpose of this demo, I'm going to take you step by step. And then hopefully, if you have Substance at home or if you want to download it as a trial, 
have a little play around with it. It's a really cool way to to get some kind of like unique designs. So, um, right, let's set this up properly. All right. So, from my understanding, I think Martina was inspired by 2000s fashion. So, for those who are around in 2000, I'm not sure if I'm just really old, but you know, I, I when I look at these designs, I just think Destiny's Child uh, colorings with the bright orange. Uh, it's a very uh, unique take on it. So, we're going to try to get into the same color palette. Uh, before I approach any replication or if I start to design anything, I would definitely, definitely always want to break down my reference. So I think a lot of people, you know, will have a reference board and they'll just whack on loads of pictures and just be like, all right, cool, let's make something. It does pay to spend a good, you know, a good amount of time actually deciphering what you're looking at um, to make sure it makes sense to your brain as well as the actual like, visual style. So breaking down a reference doesn't have to be rocket science. So I'm going to use this pen tool, for example. And the way I break it down, and I won't go too into much detail because given the time constraints, I'll look at the reference, I see what I like. Okay. So we can break it down already into color, value, and maybe shapes. The color and uh, the range of colors and the hues, for example. We can then start to understand that you know we're it's in a certain color scheme. Okay, you don't have to get too technical about it. You don't really need a painter's background, but it's good to understand that this color scheme is different to this color scheme. This color scheme is more harmonious, where this is more contrasty. Okay, so this is uh, what we call analogous color scheme or analogous color scheme. And that just means the colors are fairly close in it, if we were to look at it in a color wheel. We can also look at the, the value shift, which basically means how light or dark something is. And we can see there is subtle value shift. So we have like a highlight here, which is the smaller detail. And we have these large sweeping shapes here. OK, so we now know the darker value shapes are a little bit more dominant than the lighter shapes. OK. And in the design world, we can say the primary and secondary and tertiary shapes. But all you need to know is um, there's a hierarchy and order of shape language. Okay, And then it's like a middle tone value here, which seems to be the neutral tone. So we have three factors to have a look at now. There's a lot going on, but really this can be broken down into three simple things. So we have basically big, medium, small. Excuse my terrible handwriting. So big, medium, small shapes. The big shapes are the darker values. The smaller shapes are the lighter values. But we can even unpick it even further and start to say the saturation as well. So here you can see the smaller shapes are higher saturation. And we have some lower saturation shapes. OK, all this is knowledge, OK? Usually, when you approach a design, try not to just go crazy. With, you know, just start throwing stuff down. If you have a uh, a sense of methodology and start to say, "Okay, I want, I like the idea of this design. What makes it good?" Start to break it down into these components. And this is even before we hit the three D canvas, right? And I think this is because I'm a concept artist, so I always spend a lot of time on the two D canvas. Three um, D has no exception. You you should still be uh, breaking it down into its components. Right, okay. So that's a little bit about the prep work and, and the uh, the reference side. Um, and we've broken it down to color, value, and, and somewhat of shape and structure. Um, given the design, would you say the way we create this is haphazard and we just throw down stuff you know, willy-nilly? Uh, or would we say it's a very structured, linear approach? And I would say, honestly, it's actually fairly structured, especially when you come into programs like 3D programs that, in, that uh, relies on procedural generation uh, materials. It actually has a fair amount of structure. But the cool thing is, once you have the structure down, you can just replicate it over and over and over and over again, and you can have unlimited, infinite results. So uh, let's, uh, let's get into it. So if, you, if I close this down here, I, and we'll focus more on the program as substance itself, 
On the right, you have your layer stack, and this looks very convoluted, but I want you to ignore this completely. And I'm going to show you a breakdown of, let's break down the red one. Let's, I like the red one. Okay, so let me bring it into full view. All right. And then I'm going to actually hide, just like in Photoshop. So the one thing uh, when I got into Substance, it just reminded me of Photoshop. So for those Photoshop users or students that use Photoshop, the layer system is exactly the same. Okay, so now let's break it down even more. And if I go into Material, I could just switch it to the base color. So we're purely looking at what the color is, which is really a fun aspect of Substance. It has the ability to, you know, different have different layers and whatnot. So breaking this one down, there is a base color, which is pink. Pretty simple enough, right? And we have the swirls on top of this. And I'm going to go through exactly how to generate the swirls and how to make it a certain pattern. So but I, I'm, what I'm doing is just breaking it down and building it up, and then we'll break it down and, and build our, our very new one uh, as well. So on top of that, we have the neutral swirls, the slightly lighter neutral swirls. And then we have the darker value swirls. So remember we said the darker values will uh, be primary shapes, which means they're going to be a bit larger. So this is larger. All right. Then we have the light red swirls. Oh, I think I missed one. Then we have this kind of cool saturated coral color, which if you see carefully, it actually follows the darker shape as well. So it's actually the same pattern that's uh, being uh, used, but it's just in different widths. And then we have the highlights here, right? And you have all this kind of crazy stuff happening happening here. So let's actually make our very own um, our very own uh, like layer stack. We'll call it. So I'm going to hide the red pink. We're going to get to build our own stack. So let's uh, let's get into it. So what I'll do. So I'll have this little notepad, and this notepad will show us exactly what's going on with the layer stack. So we're going to say we're going to start off with the base color. And I'll actually write it out as if it was on the layer stack. So the base color is there. So we'll add a base color, right? We'll use the fill. And the fill layer just floods the entire, the entire um, model. And we're going to focus on just uh, base color. So we'll, we'll alt click color and we can pick a base color. Now I, I may deviate because I'm always wanting to try out new color schemes, but I'm going to keep it as as uh, as neutral as possible. So the base color could just be anything you want, to be honest. It could be, you know, blue. I don't want to put myself out there and choose a really bad color scheme, but that's fine. Um, and we'll call it base. If you can, always uh, rename the colors. I have, to keep, I have to be mindful of the time as well, actually. Um, so we'll just call this test. Okay. And that's great. So you're probably thinking, all right, that's, well, that's great, but how, how on earth do you generate all those random swirls and you know all that fun stuff? So again, it's going to be the same. We're going to hit the fill bucket, and we'll call this swirl one. And what we're going to be using is a, well, we'll do the black mask. So we'll add a black mask and then we'll add a, uh, well, we could, we could, we could take it in many directions, but for now we'll add a generator. And a generator is the equivalent of putting down a paint stroke physically by hand. So a generator just basically creates shapes for us. Uh, It makes life a little bit more easier, but you'll see why it's pretty fun. And bear in mind, there's, there are a lot of um, procedurals. So procedurals, again, is just something that is is computer can you know create stuff. So for example, we will type in brick, drag and drop. Um, ah, okay. So actually, I want to add a fill. So apologies, I've got uh, one step ahead of me there. So you know, we'll have a, add a fill on the mask. So black mask, add fill, add the brick, drag, drop, put it in there. 
All right. And what this is doing is masking out the, the base color uh, according to the brick. So now you're going to see if I scale this up correctly. And there's, there's always a plethora of options to look at. But what I would recommend is just play around with what the bricks do, you know, bricks X and Y. And you can start to see the bricks being um, added to this, right? And you have the width here and the bevel. And you have middle size and all that fun stuff. And there's 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 a lot to play around with. So spend time and, and uh play around with it. So the idea is what I want to do is if I bring up the pen tool, I ideally want to change the brick patterns to be these long lines across the garment. And then we're going to warp these lines to be swells. So we need to find a way how to make these lines long or longer, which is actually easier said than done. So we can have a look at it. And let's know that. All right, let's have a look. See, so we could stretch it out like that. And. see if we want any of the heights, for example. I think we're going to play around the scale a little bit just to kind of stretch it out. And I've got a feeling this could be kind of like that. And do you see how with every uh, design, you unless you remember the values, uh, it'll be you'll be hard pressed to always always uh, remember like what what you actually put in. So, so this is something getting closer to what I want it to be uh, to at least be, begin the swells. I probably would like to rotate it just a little bit. And before I spend too much time on this, I'm going to make sure. This looks good. Uh, mm, let's see. Let's bear with, just making sure the things are going to be good. Okay. All right, here we are. So I was looking for a slider to change the thickness of the bands, and this is very, very important. So I've got it here as gap Y, and that will change the thickness of the band. So you can see the brick generator masking the under color or the base color. So if I hide the base color there, you can see it's going under there, right? And let's actually simplify this to make it a little bit more obvious. All right, so after playing around with the brick generator, we've got the lines, we've got a, um, uh, oh, I've forgotten the setting again, where is it? Is it middle wire? Yeah, so middle wire. Let's not forget that. And this is very important because this is the slider we're going to be using to uh, make the patterns a bit more consistent. So I'm going to put it there for now. Um, and we're going to add a blur slope. So this is going to be the stack, basically. I'm going to build up to, uh, to this. And I believe the slope will be used as a filter. So right click, add filter. And here you could just type in blur, right? And you can start to see where the lines have now, um, they're starting to get uh, affected by a blur slope. Okay, you can change intensity. And I, it, from what I gather, the higher the number, um, the more, I guess, finite or, or precise the, the control the, the slope is. 
Now, I do like Blur Stope. It does get pretty wild sometimes. So just play around the settings, depending on the garment that you're using. Um, and we'll kind of keep it like that for now. That's pretty cool. And uh, we'll take it one step further and we'll introduce a warp as well. So a warp is another filter. So right click on the black mask and go to filter. And we'll just type in warp. All right. And the same thing will happen. So you'll see it uh, start to do something. So we'll change the setting a little bit and see if we can get something more, a little bit more to where we want it to be. Um, now, if I'm not mistaken, yes, OK. There's one thing I did add to the warp to make it warp a little bit more um, organic or a little bit more marble effect. So what I found was if you go to the warp filter, you click on custom noise, and I believe it's 3D simplex. And 3D simplex creates these really cool organic patterns, um, and it should already be plugged in. So I believe. I change the parameters a little bit, making sure everything is like that. And it's one of those things where making sure the uh, let's see. Ah, okay. The intensity divider is set to an appropriate kind of scale because sometimes it does get pretty, pretty uh, wiped out. Here we are. Okay. Now. There is a I'm trying to think. I think the scale is a little bit off, so I need to make sure it's doing what I want it to do. Just bear with. Let's see. All right, here we go. So we need to start to get to actually do. All right. It is there, but it's not quite there. So let's make sure. Ah, here we are. All right, I was, um, yeah, so basically I forgot to, yeah, so source type custom no noise. So when you do plug in the uh, uh, the simplex noise image input, you have to check this little source type to custom noise there. All right. Now we can actually see the effect of it. So if you look carefully here, you can see the simplex noise coming through and actually warping it. Um, be very mindful of what it's doing. And you can start to see if you increase the tiling like that, you can get some really cool effects. Now we're looking for a wavy effect. So that means we need to uh, adjust the scale a little bit. So the scale has to be, make sure. Here we are. And intensity can be jacked up a little bit. I think I set it to 10, I set it to 100. And I will use the balance. And so the balance, I find that it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, it almost as if it's a, an invisible cube that's running through this mesh and it will print out on, it's almost like, 
if you play with the well, as you can see, actually, if you just play with the sliders, uh, as long as you're observing with what's doing, you can then arrive at a conclusion. And you can see here, as I move the balance down, it's uh, basically gone. If I bring it in the mesh, it suddenly starts to warp it almost in the proximity of the um, in the proximity of the of the uh, of the mesh and you know then then size xyz starts to make sense if it's not within the boundaries of that mesh it just doesn't do anything as you can see so there is like a lot of like where the hell is what is it doing but stick with it and uh you'll get something kind of like kind of interesting i kind of like this already because it just looks wild so there's a lot more to do with this but given the time i'll just swiftly move on i think i spent way too much time on that um but yeah we're getting there so if we go back to the brick generator and i believe it was middle size yeah so if you now change middle size you can see the patterns go thinner to thicker and that's exactly what we want that's exactly what we want if anything the blur slope is adding uh, maybe not the best Maybe if I dial it down a bit. I do like the blur slope because it adds that extra little bit of randomness that um, just adds that kind of touch to it. Okay, so let's re-examine this stack. So we've got your base color. You've got your first line of pattern. If I disable this, it all started out from a brick generator, which is cool. All right, we added a bit of blur slope. Not necessary, but, you know, and then we added the warp, which completely starts to create its own uh, madness, I guess. Now, you're, you're probably thinking, how on earth do I get from this to the finished process? Well, it's easy now because we've developed a, a formula. This is the formula here. Uh, this here is basically the formula for the pattern. And then now what we're going to do is just duplicate and stack it and stack it and stack it and start to change the width and the color. So all we're changing now is the width, the color. And that's how you get the gradient effect. So let's see this in action. All right, so we're going to click on the fill icon and control D for duplicate, and we'll call it swirl T. Now, I don't have a color in mind, but I should probably put a color down. Um, let's see. So here's a little bit more saturated and it looks like it's just replaced the color. But what we can do now is go back to the brick generator itself and go to middle size Y. And now if you, if I bring it in a little, a little tad, you can see what's happening here where the color has peaked through um, the other colors as well. Okay. Um, this is quite a different color choice, but we'll see. One extra thing I might add actually is a blur. So let me go to add filter. We'll just add your basic blur just to soften up the looks like a little bit too too wild there. All right. You see how the blur softens it up quite good? And we'll do the same for the bottom swell as well. So we go filter. Blur, and then it's completely softened up. So we're gonna bring it back down a little bit. I must say this pattern is a little bit too busy for my liking, but whatever, we'll, we'll roll that, and we get to adjust afterwards anyway. So this color here, we'll probably do a. Well, we'll see. I'm not sure yet. And we'll go brick generator, and now we're just minimizing the width. So middle size, even more so. The colors are not that different. So let me just for demonstration, I'll just show you uh, this actual color here. See, it's coming, turning out something weird camo blue color. So we go blur. If I sharpen the detail, you can see. Now the cool thing is, you can add softness and sharpness all in one take as well. So it's a really fun. Um, 
it's a really fun aspect. How am I doing for time, by the way? Uh, feel free to have a kind of cl clapper thing. Um, so now we have, if we look, we have base color one, swell one, swell two, which is a subtle kind of taking it. And then we have the blue take on that as well. Okay. And we can spend a bit more time obviously finessing it and softening it. Maybe we'll, we want to add like a, a bright blue highlight. So we duplicate, go back into Brick Generator, we make it even smaller. This is probably where if you start off with thicker bands, then yeah, it's a little bit more favorable. Okay. And then we go to the color itself and see if we can jack up the brightness and make it really obnoxious like that. Go back to Brick Generator. And let's see, middle size Y. Bring it all the way down. So that's the smallest it will go. All right, fair enough. And in that case, I'll just reduce the blur to kind of get that come in. Kind of interesting. Not sure if I like it yet, but we'll see. I want to keep it within blue range. Okay. And on top of that, you don't even need to, well, after the procedural side. So let's just recap. We have this. I'll probably want to soften it a little bit more. Second layer has the, the pinky undertones. I think this blue has perhaps gone a bit too much. So let's try bringing out this pink a little bit. And then reduce the brick just a little bit. See the pink come through. And we have the bright blue. And the cool thing is you, you, you don't just need to rely on the procedurals. So now you have that control. You can actually right click in the mask and actually add a paint. So you can actually go in and start to mask out yourself, much like in Photoshop, like when you're done with the um when you're done with the uh like the, the general process, you could then start to say, all right, maybe I don't want this bright blue everywhere. So you could type in basic, uh basic soft is a go-to. And it's just a case, a simple case of either adding, or if I lower the, the opacity and the flow a little bit and hit X, you can then start to remove the blue highlights and start to uh, choose where you want those blue highlights to be. So for example, you can focus it on the focal points or just dial it down as, as you see fit. Now the contrast for me isn't there, so I can easily go back to Let's say, where is the purple? I believe, oh, okay, it'll be the base color. Let's see what happens if we dial this down a little bit and just add a little bit more contrast. This pattern is starting to become like a, like a patchwork of oddities. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the, process in itself and i think if i harmonize the colors a lot more so for example this yellow right then we can start to see okay maybe the base color could be neutral we have this kind of formula where we can skip up and down the the um the layer stack and just start to really start to dial in what we're looking for as far as like an organic uh, pattern design we can sharpen up the lines we can uh, make the lines a bit like sharper so the blur i don't want it that sharp but it's kind of cool let's see if the slope can has anything to do with that sort of it's not too bad 
but you get my dress right and uh yeah so that's kind of um the the uh the approach how, how i'd like it if i had more time i would spend a lot more time you know finessing the gradients um with the previous examples it took me around uh you know a couple of hours to really dial in what i'm looking for but i hope the combination of the of uh this kind of stack situation here uh just to recap it is the brick generator uh combined with a blur slope with a warp and the warp has a simplex noise attached to it and you make sure you change your source type to custom noise when you attach simplex noise to it and then you just got to fiddle with the sliders i wish i could tell you like a precise value but honestly it's going to be different especially if you're using different garments and different scales and different objects and all that kind of stuff is um there's an infinite amount of values you could use so have a lot of patience uh, it's really fun when you get into it like it is really really fun um because it's a very forgiving approach to, to design you're not going to use like pencil and paper and just have to you know, throw it in the trash every time you could like make this one duplicate this entire folder right and then start again from scratch and say all right well let's try this one or let's try instead of a brick generator you could try like a wood generator for example uh, which we could do if we had time i'm not sure i don't think i have time but um you get the idea so i mean i'll show you the, like some other bits and bobs for example like this one was a bit more subdued but the same exactly the same approach it's exactly the same approach if i But there so if you follow along the base color is pink uh this this stack here is just for the thread detail which we will get into in a, a little bit uh later just adding that little bit of extra a uh, little bit of detail so here i've just used a wood pattern so here's a good example of you don't have to use the brick generator you could use a wood pattern and by that, I mean, you would add right click fill and you would just look for wood. You literally type in like wood. And usually there would be some kind of um, procedural wood. Like I think I use this one, wood 01. And you just throw it into the uh, slot here. And then you just like go to town on the sliders and you make the uh swell so in this case you can see like this is practically wood pattern uh, zoomed up close this is like a knot and this is like the thread details and whatnot and then the blur slope you can see here added a little bit of um softness or variation of softness and then the warp warped it into its little swells and you know kind of like the pattern in itself and then the blur just softened it all up and kind of brought it all together. And then that's what you have here. So that's like a, another working sample, but a very different end result, but practically the same steps. And then I just duplicated it. And then I expanded the grain of the wood a little bit and so forth and so forth. And I, you know, you could practically do this like as many times as you want and you can have some really fun gradients, but you know, um, I think here I used like uh, I think here I used about five gradients. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So five gradients here. A little bit more of an art choice here, and just made it a bit more sensible, you know. Uh, but again, the, the choice is up to you as, as the, the designer, and you're not limited by the procedure. And that's the one thing I love about this um, technique. You're not limited by um, like you don't just have a predefined set of things to to use and that's all you could do and you have this weird kind of like limitation you could literally say i want it to be this color i want to gradate to six steps i can have this pattern if i mess around with sliders enough you know you can just get something really unique to yourself so that's um that's pretty much how i like to like experiment in substance um that's one of the strongest things in substance is um you could go the super like you know predefined route uh, but you can definitely go off the beaten path and things go nuts and you know it usually turns out pretty well um 
so if I were to wrap this up, I would uh, add in all the bits and bobs, such as the, the shiny black stuff, um, which let's see if I have it. If I go to material. And to be honest, um, the fabricant did a really good job of just setting out a pretty standard pattern. So I just uh, drag dropped the material on this uh, UV shell and it just did it, you know, as is. But I just decided to go with a simple black. And what's really cool is, uh, I believe there are some inbuilt materials as well which is really fun so if i type in us um all right should I just have a look see i think going on substance source is a good place to start out with these kind of materials when we're finishing off a garment you probably want to look at the thread detail uh you want to see what it actually was the material like or material indication so you'll see the specular highlight is very uh, particular here. If I, I'm not sure it might blow up my PC, but if I go to 4K textures, just let this little green bar go up and promise that, or well, fingers crossed that it doesn't just blow up. But all right it's uh it's coping um what's really fun is you can start to add this kind of like finishing touches of of the specularity and and uh, um, the finishing touches i say I, I i still feel that to this day even as a concept guy spend time on the on the design spend time on, on what makes your design unique you know, this is this is where the majority of the effort should go to. And then when you go into the finalization stages, then you can focus on the cool stuff like, um, you know, the you know the, the fabric detail. And it, everyone wants to like detail out things straight away. But honestly, it is things that make your design your design is is the most important, I think. Um, and this is where substance is really awesome for that because you can literally have these predefined materials just drag and drop. So. For example, if I get rid of this grain shiny and if I grab this charm use uh, fabric and I butchered that that uh, charm use or charm use charm use or something, um, so if I drag and drop that into the shelf, for example, um, we can see what it does. All right, just out of the box, you can start to get some really cool procedural patterns and. Um, you know, tweak it to our heart's content. Like it is pretty, um, it's pretty cool what you can, what you can start to do here and, and, you know, you start to have all these predefined options, uh, which are actually invaluable if you want to bring your, um, if you want to bring your, uh, materials to life. I think, I think the next step really is, uh, Obviously, it's one thing having a garment um, coming out of Clo and uh, Marvelous Designer, for example, but the way it plugs into those programs, you can start to bring in some real life into those fabrics. I think it takes it to a whole new level. And you can see it only took me two seconds, just drag and drop, boom, and uh, you've got yourself a really cool you know, ensemble on the whole thing. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I wanted to to uh, demo today um definitely have uh spent some time with that like technique i definitely want to see some some cool like uh gradient swirly madness uh in the forums uh, i think that'd be pretty cool um but yeah that's um pretty good what we have uh for today so i'm not sure if uh, anyone uh, would like to uh, ask any particular questions on the workflow um, or how I did a particular thing, but hopefully I was pretty, well, fairly clear, I would say. Hi, V. Thank you so much for this amazing demo. This was is really cool outfit. 
Um, if and does anybody have any questions, uh, just uh, drop it off in the chat, and uh, we'll uh, NV will answer them. Um, in the meantime, V, did you want to share with us, um, you know, maybe uh, a little bit about uh, UCA, what you teach, and uh, the MA program that is launching in September? Uh, yeah, for sure, for sure. So uh, UCA, if I just so I bring it over here, and put that over there. So uh, UCA Fashion and Textiles is probably revered in Europe, probably one of the best uh, universities for fashion and textiles. Uh, we have a lot of graduates that are going off into industry. And uh, what's really interesting is because the whole collaboration between UCA and ArtStation uh, was born out of the idea that we are we have created a digital fashion course for next year. And basically, the the barriers between games, film, and the fashion industry are starting to blur, and became more apparent during the you know uh, the, the the recent times. So, as an artist from the concepts uh, background, I noticed that a lot of the bigger studios were hiring, like you know, fully fledged fashion designers or costume designers uh, from the fashion industry. Right. And vice versa, the fashion industry were hiring 3D artists and 3D designers from the games of film. And there's a lot of crossover. And you've probably seen these avatars, uh, you know, being draped. I know Substance has a lot of these like fabrics now that, that are ready to just be popped onto these uh, garments. Um, but the, the one niche in the market was that we don't have enough 3D people or people with 3D background that have a solid understanding of fashion. So we've designed a master's course for those who want to top up their knowledge or to understand a little bit more about fashion before you delve straight into uh, generating garments. Um, I know most of the major studios or the bigger studios do require some sensibilities in fashion. If you are becoming a, a character designer, uh, if you're just designing characters that wear human clothes, for example, it is you can tell the ones that know or understand about pattern design, uh, about fashion in itself, even about trends and things like that. So this course is a really cool melting pot of, um, of, uh, well, fashion and, and games and vice versa. The fashion students out there can then benefit from the, uh, well, the 3D aspect because a fashion designer will have their traditional skill set. They know pattern making, they know probably prints or textiles, but also, they now know the 3D skill set that a lot of the bigger brands are now venturing into. Okay, so you've probably seen a lot of um, not the big brand names that are doing collaborations, and you'll see them like do 3D interpretations, or you know you'll see them in a video game or things like that. So it is bubbling under the surface. Um, Art Station has caught wind of it, which is great. Um, UCA are basically on the forefront of it. So it's basically over the next coming years, you're going to see a massive influx of a new breed of designers that are not only equipped on the 3D skill set, but they're equipped as, you know, f fashion designers, essentially. Um, so it's just the best of both worlds. Um, so yeah, that's that's basically the course. So check it out on the uh, UCA website, uh, or just type in digital fashion UCA, it will pop up. And uh, yeah, that's that's basically that. <laughs> that's a plug, guys. Awesome. Thanks, V. Oh, I just went, I just noticed a question that came up from Eric Tekken. Um, he had a question about your demo and he was asking if the UV sheet, will you use the UV sheet to print the fabric? Yeah, so what's interesting is um, like printing fabrics in production, like going to production, really. Is that? Uh, it's not clear, but yeah, I, I think it's a uh, oh, okay. section. Yeah. 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 And I get it. So would you use the UV sheet, which essentially is a pattern it is a pattern, right? It is a pattern design. Uh, you could take this into production. However, there'll be a few extra steps, um, to get into production because when you, when you start to think about production, you have to think about the, the scale, the feasibility, um, there's a lot more to consider, like, cause, uh, I don't think this garment was made to uh, real world units or to to real world scale, um, so that's something you'd have to like. There's there's a whole process to that, but I, I guess you could take that to print. But there's a lot there's it's a bit more involved when you start to take it to production. 
<laughs> yeah, that makes sense. All right. So um, thank you so much, uh, V, for doing this demo for us. Um, if uh, you've watched this demo, uh, please make sure to check out our station Fashion Week on our platform and on our social media. Um, if you do try to follow this uh, this demo and you make your own design, uh, make sure to just tag uh, on our station or on social media, uh, hashtag our station Fashion Week so we can uh, check it out and possibly reshare it. Um, Fashion Week is going on till Friday. So uh, yeah, just check out our station and um, Thank you again so much for joining us. And yeah, take care. All the best, everybody. Thank Cheers. you. Bye.